Hello and welcome to another episode of Leaders of Transformation. Today we're going to talk about shifting. Can't be a leader transformation without a few shifts along the way. Um, and sometimes, what's the saying? Shifts happen. Something like that. <laughs> but uh, we're going to have a, we're going to have some fun here today. We have John Hinkle and a shout out to Interview Valet for another amazing introduction to uh, amazing guests. Uh, John has a tremendous amount of experience in the corporate world. Um, he's uh, experienced a lot of shifts. He actually decided to have a major shift of his own, uh, leaving the corporate world. And now he is an author, a speaker, a personal growth coach uh, who empowers men and women to navigate changes. And certainly there's a lot of changes happening in, in the world around us now. And to be able to find their second half purpose. And we'll talk a little bit more, more about what he talk, refers to there. And um, as I said, his experience is with Fortune 500 companies. And um, it's really equipped him with tools to be able to understand the transition and how to help people reach their own personal goals as well as business goals. And so we're really excited to have him here. John, welcome to Leaders Transformation. Thank you. So, so excited to be here. I've been waiting for this for a long time. So, Me too. Pleasure. Yeah, me too. Well, and John has a book, which we're going to be talking about called Shift and moving from where you are to the life you want. And I think that's a, that's a place that a lot of us are in. You know, there's a lot of people just always, even at a stage, like I know for myself, we talked about this in the pre-chat, you know, it's like, you're always evolving. It doesn't matter yes. where you are. It's okay. Where's there's, oh, there's that next step. You never arrive. And I think the, it's like you're either growing or dying. And so always shifting. And as I was uh, reviewing some of the material that I've received from you, you know, just like, okay, well, how can I apply that in my own life as I shift again into what's next for me? And so I'm just really, yeah, really excited to have this conversation with you. And I'm excited our listeners and our viewers are here. And uh, I surprised John. I'm like, yeah, we're doing video. He's like, okay. <laughs> so, so I appreciate um, the opportunity for people to also watch this on video. Um, but regardless, whether you're listening to us or whether you're watching us, uh, we're just really excited that you're here. And uh, I trust there's going to be tremendous value in here for you that you can use in your life, in your business, in your relationships. And uh, so now before we dive any further, I do want to encourage you to go to leadersoftransformation.com afterwards. Uh, all the show notes will be there, the ways to connect with John, all the links will be there. And also, I'm really excited. I actually get to say that I'm on author now. Um, can't tell you how long people have been asking me to write a book. I have a number of books uh, that are in the works. This one actually is a compilation book. It's called Power Up Superwomen. Uh, Dominic Damaski, who's been on this show, invited me to be part of it. He wanted to bring together a group of women to empower other women. Uh, now, and of course, especially this day and age, it's a very timely subject. And so he's brought together a number of authors, several of which have actually been on the Leaders of Transformation. So you get a chance to uh, hear their backstory, their story of struggle, and how they overcome it, uh, overcame it. I'm having a hard time. Last time I referred to this as well, I also said overcome it, and I went, I don't know. <laughs> English wasn't my first subject, apparently, but uh, overcame the struggles in their mm -hmm. life and, um, and have, have gone on to uh, create success. And so the idea is to encourage uh, women to power up and to really step out of their comfort zone and uh, live with passion, with purpose, and with power. So I would encourage you to go get a copy. They're on pre-order right now. Uh, it's coming out in February. Get a copy at leadersoftransformation.com on the resource page. It'll be there for you. So great, great tool. I'm really excited about that. So coming back to John, um, John, you know, we, we talk about you were in the corporate world and working with, you know, Fortune 500 companies, many, many years experience there. And you decided at some point that you were going to, to shift. So first of all, let's talk about when you say shift, what do you mean by shift? And then maybe we can follow that up with your own, you know, backstory of how you did that for yourself. Sure. Well, when I talk about shift, I talk about the changes that we all go through in our lives and our, our need to and our ability to make decisions and, um, and to move forward. And, you know, life has changed, right? There's nothing ever stays the same. And if you think this year is going to be the same as last year, you're mistaken because 
not just every year, but every day, something new is a challenging or an opportunity comes into your life. And a lot of us have spent our whole careers maybe learning how to help other people achieve their goals, help our brands achieve their growth, their, our company's brands that we're working for or the company. And we don't think a lot about sometimes our own goals and what we're trying to, to do. And then life happens, right? So we start out in our 20s and we got all these great plans for ourselves. And then life happens and, you know, we find ourselves sometimes in our 40s or 50s and then we go, what happened? You know, it's not what, I'm not where I thought I was going to be. And so the idea around SHIFT is, uh, SHIFT is an acronym for five principles that will help you figure out exactly what you, where you're going in life and how to get there. That's, that's basically it. So um, and we should talk about the five principles uh, that, that we have uncovered that really successful people use um, to help them make those right decisions, take those right actions, have the right people surrounding them, have the right purpose in front of them so that they can move forward in success. So that's what SHIFT is. Got it. Well, I would love us to unpack that further and, and to yeah. go through each and every one of them. But just to set a context, I mean, you made a huge shift going from corporate, being very successful there, to being an entrepreneur ultimately, which is kind of like opposite <laughs> in yeah. terms of on, on many levels. So what what led you to make that shift and uh, and, and how did you do it? Where did you sure. for this, some of the steps that you took? Well, let me talk about what led me to do it because I think it's a story that many of us have if we're grown up in the corporate world. And that is that you come to a time where you either find out that you're not going to make it to where you want to be possibly because that pyramid gets smaller and smaller as you're climbing up. Uh, and then there's always somebody there that, um, and I, here's how I would describe it. You're, you, when you're in the corporate world, you're sort of on the edge of a pit. You don't know you're there. And sometimes somebody might come and just nudge you off and into the pit, right? So there's, there's all kinds of things that can happen to you. And I think the further up you go, the more challenges and the more risks there are for that. So I came to a point in my career in corporate world where I just, I just didn't think I was going to get where I wanted to go. I was dissatisfied about where I was. It was not fulfilling to me anymore. I felt like I was achieving goals for the company and I wasn't really achieving what I really wanted. So I kind of had to take that step back. And I think a lot of us do when we're kind of getting that age, maybe, you know, the 35, 40, 45, where you think, is this it? And uh, for me, uh, I think in a lot of guys, I'll speak to guys um, because I know them well. We get to a point where we think, you know what, I have big goals for my life and I wanted to conquer it. And now I'm at a point where do I, ha I, I haven't done it yet. Is there still time for me to do it? Do I have the capabilities to do it? And there's just a lot of anxiety for men around that whole idea about running out of time, not getting to where I wanted to be, feeling defeated, feeling like, um, I wouldn't say a loser, but just feeling like I'm not reaching my potential. So I think it's just, that's happened to me. And I know in speaking with men across the country, it's just how it is for guys this age. You know, a lot of responsibilities for family and taking care of people and protecting people and not thinking that you're going to be able to do it the way that they had hoped to. So, yeah, well, I'm here actually in my brother's house, um, visiting with family over the last little while here. And, uh, and we've had this conversation. He just turned 50 and, uh, he made some changes over the last few years because he, he bought this fixer upper, which this is the only room that's done ish. <laughs> I know they want to do more to it, but it's somewhat done. <laughs> so I'm doing it here. But, um, and my sister-in-law might come through that door at some point in time. She's been out and out and about today, but we'll, I'm not sure if she's coming back at some point. So uh, we'll wave to her when she comes in. But uh, <laughs> anyway, no, the, um, the, the, he made a shift because he's like, you know what? I have four kids grown, certainly, you know, two graduated from university at that point, uh, two in process, uh, their kids, grandkids coming along and so many responsibilities. And he just was like, you know what? Uh, they both had some health issues as well. Mm -hmm. And so they said, look, you know what? We need to make some changes here. And, uh, and I really uh, commend them both for making these adjustments and, um, you know, and now putting themselves in a position where they're, you know, financially in a really, really nice position, uh, great property. This is a beautiful property out in the country and so forth and, um, and feeling happier. 
about what yes. you know what they're doing and that's the key and there, but there's always there's always stages right what's next but that was one of the things that he actually said you know was i know that i can't keep doing what i was doing forever because you this your mortality starts to kick in and i know i'm 46 and that's starting to you know show up for me as well right mm -hmm. realizing both my parents mm -hmm. have passed away in the last two years you know life is short so yes. what else do i want to do in this next half of my life what do i really want to get you know accomplished how, how do i when i what would make me feel fulfilled well in right. lots of things in my life but what's going to make me feel fulfilled at the end of my days and i look back and uh and so that's why it's such an important topic so many people in this stage right now absolutely and i think the thing is is that people want to change or they need to change they may find themselves in a place where they've got to change you know yeah. a circumstance happens in their life and they have to but people aren't really equipped to understand how to do that in a way that is uh that works for them so we kind of stumble through it and for people in corporate world i would say you know, when you leave the corporate world, your life has been structured for so many years. You know, every Monday morning there's a meeting. Every Wednesday you've got this. You know, your reports are due on Friday. Everything is structured for you. And when you leave that world, I, I kind of call it the corporate spin cycle. You know, you get spun around and then you get spun out and it's dizzy. You know, you, the ground is not stable around you. You just don't even know kind of which way to go. So the shift principles are kind of there to guide you, to help you figure out how to um, take control get some insights about yourself so that you can kind of make a informed and, and decisive way moving forward. Got it. So let's talk about the five. And I know you also sure. have a copy of your book um, yep. uh, showing that you can show us the copy of it. Um, but uh, yeah, you've got uh, five principles. So let's, let's unpack them. What does the S stand for? Sure. The S stands for seek advice. Anytime you are t trying to make a change in your life or you're trying to figure out what to do next in your life, you, you can't do it alone. You need to have people around you who can be those wise people to help you figure things out. And I know there's a lot, you know, we all say, you know, we're self-made men or we're self-made women. Well, that's really absolutely not true. Nobody in this world is self-made. It all takes, it, everybody needs to have that sort of inner circle, those people that are helping you, you know, pushing you up, pushing you forward, uh, kicking your butt, you know, kind of helping you to get to that next place, you know, giving you advice. And I use the example of, of um, you know, King Arthur had his court, Robin Hood had his merry men, the president has his cabinet, and good Lord, Jesus had his disciples. I mean, it takes a group of people around you that can see things you can't see, that can, you know, push you forward when you need to be pushed, hold you accountable. Uh, give you ideas, network, you know, you're such a wonderful networker, but people like that that can introduce you to people that can help make a difference in your life. And so I think the first thing that people need to do is they're thinking about making changes in their life or trying to pursue a goal. Make sure you've got the right people around you. And uh, in our workshops and in the, in the courses I teach, we kind of show you kind of the types of people you should have around you surrounding so that you can go out and know exactly who to find, not just you know, just kind of go out there and, you know, pick your brother-in-law uh, because he's somebody, you know, you know, so uh, we try to be very systematic about and intentional about kind of who you need to have in your life to help you get where you're trying to go. So that's S. Yeah. And you don't, you don't know, I don't know what I don't know. Yeah. So, you know, I need people around me. Uh, I was just, we were just actually talking about this in the last conversation I had interview I did uh, with Karen Aberley. We were talking about, you know, um, surrounding yourself with experts people mm -hmm. that have gone before you or people that know specific areas really well you have a batting coach you have a pitching coach you've got specific people rather than assuming that you have to know it I know that uh, when you get to the 40s 50s 60s whatever transition time comes um, and you know I worked with a lot of executives in transition they think they have to know and they think they have to mm -hmm. figure it out on their own because they should be smart enough to figure this out but it's the long road I mean I've taken that road myself come on mm -hmm. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna figure this out I'm smart I can figure this out yeah but it takes a lot longer to figure it out why don't you just ask for directions it's like the guy you know the joke in stereotype guys don't ask for directions well I know a few women who don't ask that's right it's quite so well either so. <laughs> well part of that is like, we're just what we're, we're I'm yeah. <laughs> Well, we're just too close to ourselves, right? And we just can't see what we can't see because we're in the middle of it. And, uh, you know, if you were, if I was on your team or you were on my team, you would have that sort of one step away perspective to be yeah. able to see things that I just absolutely could not see. And I need to hear from you and need to, for you to tell me what I can't see. 
So it's just extremely important to have the right people. Nobody succeeds without the right people around them to help them. Yes. Amen. So what does the H stand for? The H stands for honor your past. And I think moving forward, we, a lot of us, and I'll, I'll talk myself as part of this. I would love to forget all the bad parts of my life. Uh, but you cannot move forward unless you really go back and examine all those parts of your life, the successes and the failures, uh, and really understand what brought you to the point that you are now so that you can use that information and harness that information to move forward. I use the example of, you know, we're, we're all, if you know, you and I are, and others that are listening have been around for a while. So, you know, in our journey in life, we pick up a lot of baggage along the way, right? And some of it's good baggage, you know, and it's light and easy to carry. Some of it is very heavy stuff. And I think, you know, when we get to a point when you're wanting to kind of move forward in life and, and do what, achieve what you're trying to achieve, you've got to stop, unpack the bags, kind of look at all the good stuff that's happened to you, the promotions, the accolades, the, the successes that you've had, Figure out, okay, why was that a success? Why, what, what was it about that that I can use and carry forward that I need to continue to, to lean on? Um, and then more importantly, though, is to go back and look at those bags of discouragement, disappointments, failures, and open them up and just figure that out, too. Um, we tend to not want to do that. But in my, in my thinking is that, you know, even if you have a setback or a failure in your career or in your relationships or whatever – the whole thing wasn't a failure. You can crack open that failure and find successes within that. And so you kind of need to crack it open, look at it, learn from it, figure out what actually was a good part of that that I want to hang on to and carry forward. And one of the things I absolutely need to drop, a lot of that is, um, you know, self-esteem issues or um, things that just continue to be a shadow over your life that you just need to get rid of. But if you're going forward in life, you got to, you got to kind of honor the past by kind of looking at the things that have happened to you and figuring out how to use them or discard them so you can move forward in a, in a more effective way. Yeah. I was thinking uh, as you, as you were saying that I had this visual of not leaning on your successes because sometimes we do that where it's like, Oh, I had this success there and there and, and you kind of lean on that, um, Mm. which can hold you back or, uh, you know, getting stuck under the failures. Mm. So either leaning on or, you know, getting stuck under and, and uh, it's, you know, it doesn't serve us mm. either way. And I love what you said there. There's successes in the midst of the failures. I've had a lot of failures in my life and, and in, when I unpack them, I look at those lessons. One of my mentors, Blair Singer always said, you know, you either win or you learn. Yes. And if you learn something, is that a win? Yes. Well, then it's it's a win. You got to extract the win even from yeah. from those struggles. And and it's amazing because how many people do we know now who are coaches, speakers, authors, consultants? They're out there doing their entrepreneurial thing and doing it fabulously. And mm-hmm. they actually took the thing that was their greatest pain, their greatest struggle, and have turned that into a strength and I'm actually teaching other people how to go through the very thing that they went through. And so, so often I know we, we want to, we want to shove it under the carpet, but that's the gift, you know, that you can actually share with others. Mm. And I've had clients who have said to me, you know, am I the only one that's (laughs) ever experienced this or that you've ever known to work with that's gone through this? And truth is most cases not. No. You know, there, there's so many people are going through, but if you feel like you're the only one go, going through it or the only one who's gone through it, then you actually, uh, it can hold you back. Yeah. You know, I think one of the biggest um, shadows, I was talking about a shadow falling over is even if you had an early success, that can be a shadow that falls over you mm. in the future. Think about people who have been successful in the past and that success is even a burden that they can't, they can't move away from, you know, they're, typecast or whatever the right word is, but they can't be something else because they're so stuck uh, in that, Why stuck in that, that success. Mm. So and that's, that's something else to think about. Yeah, I can relate to that. It's even looking at it and saying, okay, if I was to do anything, it's, it's really clearing the slate. And if I yes. want to do anything, what would that be? Rather than through the lens of here are all the things mm. that I've done before. Yeah, yeah that's good. It so makes me think S- of like child actors and who can't quite yeah. get past that, uh, that part of their life. And so they can't, 
they can't make it as an adult actor, but they can't figure out what to do. Yeah. You know, they're tied to that. And yeah. I, you know, that's, that could be a sad place too for people and they need to, to kind of work through it. Yeah. Not having the freedom f- to be whoever they want to be because we do sure. change and evolve. Absolutely. Yeah. So we've got S we've got H. So seek advice, honor your past. What's I, I investigate your options. So if you're trying to move forward and, and this is, I, this may be a guy thing as well, but um, a lot of times we just charge forward and we, we see something we want. We just charge forward and we don't think about the fact that there may be more than one way to get there. We, we go towards the straight and fastest way. And what happens sometimes is that if we hit a hurt or we hit a blockage, um, we get stuck and then we just give up. And uh, that's just not the way life works. I kind of use an example here in Texas. We've got this road, this highway called I-35 that goes from Dallas to Austin. It's the fastest, straightest way to get there. But it has been under construction for 30 years probably. And probably Jesus will come back before it's ever finished. (laughs) Um, And oftentimes you'll get there and you'll get stuck. Traffic will be backed up. The road will be closed. And never when I need to go to Austin or if you, you know wherever you're traveling, if you get stuck, do you say, okay, well, I guess I better turn around and go home. That's not what we do, right? We take out our navigation system and we go, okay, well, what exit do I get off? What's the other way I can get there? Sometimes we don't do that in our own lives. We, we just get stuck. And so I think the I is about investigating the options. And what we kind of teach is, you know, there's more, one, there's more than one way to get your goal. You may, there may be a fast way, but there may be a more more exciting way, a more, you know, sometimes you may have to go sideways or backwards to go forwards. And so it's that idea that if you're trying to get to somewhere, or if there's a big change coming up in your life, you got to stop and explore all the options. You, you can't just like plow through thinking that uh, it's, you know, that you're not going to run into any hurdles. Yeah. It's like another one of my mentors, he said certain personality types, and that doesn't that's not just men, women as well, this dominant personality type, driver, doer, decisive personality type, uh, you know, they, they can be lost, but they won't, won't slow down or ask for directions or take a detour. It's like they're lost, but making good time, <laughs> going in the wrong direction. So yeah. certainly can relate to that. What about the F? F is focus on your purpose. And I know there's a lot, you know, there's a million things said about focus on your why and, and all of that. And I, I think that's important. I think the thing that I always want to stress is that some people get really stuck there because they don't feel like they've got a purpose that's big enough worth pursuing. And we all can't build water wells in Africa. We just can't, you know, <laughs> it'd be nice if we could. But most of us uh, or all of us have a sphere of influence where we are and we can have a purpose within that and have make a difference. So, you know, it's with, if it's with your business, your family, your church, your community, whatever that sphere of influence is, you can find a purpose there that is worth pursuing and, and pouring yourself into. So part of what we do is we try to help people kind of figure out what that why is. But also I think it's important to have a who attached to your why. A lot of people find their purpose, try to go towards their purpose. And if they find it, they realize that it was all for themselves and it's a pretty empty place to be. And so we try to talk about, you know, who is that who that's attached to your why beside yourself um, and, and making that a purpose of your life is to be service, you know, to have a service to others, uh, bring people along with you or to serve others in, in finding your purpose. So I think that's just a very important thing for us to do for our, our emotional health, our spiritual health, uh, our success in life um, in all things is just to make sure that there's a strong purpose and a strong purpose beyond yourself that, uh, that you're kind of reaching towards. Yeah. It reminds me of somebody who said, you know, find something to, um, to work for some, somebody to win for. And yes. uh, definitely. And it's a lonely, it's lonely otherwise. Yeah. So you got it all this is. stuff and then, and then what? Yeah. Very, very true. Great insight. Well, because you know, a lot of people do talk about the why now purpose, yes. Why find your why all that Simon Sinek. I mean, it is so prevalent right now. 15 years ago, I did a workshop in, I think it was 2006. Somebody had asked me to come in and do a workshop for their group. Um, that was meeting. It's like almost like a meetup group back then. And it was, uh, you know, finding your life's purpose. And I had never talked on that subject. Um, but it's something that we had talked about and so forth Mm -hmm. in, uh, in discussion. He said, can you do a workshop on that? And I said, yeah, certainly can. 
um, because I went through that process and discovered it myself. And so I just unpacked what I had done and stuff. But nowadays there's so much out there. But I also think even though these things are not revolutionary, like, oh, wow, seek advice. Not like anybody's never heard that before or investigate your past or uh, investigate options to honor your past. But the key is, isn't so much the information, you know, um, if content was the solution, everybody's solutions would already be solved because there's lots right. of content out there. It's, it's putting it in a package. It's putting it in a process That's right. where you actually do it. Knowing and, not, and doing are two different things. And I think that, that's what I really love about this is it's like, these are principles and saying, okay, step one, step two. Because when you're in transition or you're stuck, or as one of my clients called it, frozen, that's the word yeah. he used, I, I'm frozen. My friend is frozen, you know, and, and he doesn't know what to do or where, where to go. You don't have the clarity of mind to go, oh, I need to do this, I need to do that. You need somebody to guide you through that or that's you right. process like your book, you know, even if somebody wants to just go through the book, but go through that process. Um, and, and genius isn't, isn't necessarily making the complex more complex. It's actually taking the complex and making it simple. And that's exactly right. And that's what I try to do with these is they're easy to understand. They're hard to do. So, and I, you know, I use an example a few years ago, a friend told me about this example uh, as he was relating to, um, to shift. And he said, you know, one, t one year I got my daughter a bicycle for Christmas and we had it stored in a box in the garage. And at Christmas Eve, after she'd gone to bed, I pulled it out to, you know, to get it out and put it out under the tree. And when I opened the box, I realized that it had not been assembled. And he said, and worse, there were no instruction sheets inside. And he said, I knew what the bike was supposed to look like, of course, but, and I knew I probably had all the tools I needed to put it together, but I didn't know where to start. I didn't know where to start or how to kind of assemble it. And I think that's how a lot of people are. We, we kind of know what we want, but we don't have those instructions. The, and I call it a shift manual, but we don't have that manual that kind of, kind of helps us walk through it in a way that we can really feel uh, comfortable enough and have intention to, to be able to move forward. So I thought that was such a great example of, of what, what you know, having a process can do for you. Absolutely. And when you have somebody who actually walks you through it, uh, a big a value of you being a personal growth coach, um, you know, coaching the coaching industry, what we do is we, we show you your blind spot. We also show you mm -hmm. where you can, you know, the skills you need in order to develop competency. And so, right. uh, yeah, really, really good. So we've got S, seek advice. H, honor your past. I, which is in investigate the options. Yeah. F, focus on your purpose. What's the T? The T is take action, own it. <laughs> you can have all the advisors in the world. You can, you can know your why you can, you know, have all the, the pathways, but if you don't take action, then none of it makes any, uh, it just doesn't take any sense. And I think that's the hardest thing to do is to take action. That's that first step because it takes courage. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I think, you know, if, if I were talking to a group of men, I would say, you know, you got to man up, you know, you got to own the process. You got to own the decisions. You got to own the results. You got to do it. And uh, I think that's for women as well. We, we just got to take responsibilities for our lives, that our lives are ours. We're the ones who are, you can make it or break it. And uh, all these things may be influencing that, but ultimately you're in control. And if you, you know, if you're not taking charge of your own life and kind of forging that path forward, then, then you won't have the life you want. And the shift principles are really, um, they're, you know, you have to kind of do them all. You know, it's kind of a package. You don't have to, they're not sort of sequential in that sense, um, but they are sort of, you know, you can't just do one and then succeed if you're not doing all the other things. But absolutely the most important thing, the foundation of it all is your abilities to take action and your willingness and your courage to take action. Yeah. Well, I always say at the end of every interview, I know you've heard a few of them, you know, leaders take action. Without action, there's no transformation that occurs. Nothing, nothing happens right. without action. So big believer right. uh, in that. Now, so these are the five principles. How have you applied them? Maybe just share um, in your own life and then what you're doing now. You kind of alluded to workshops and so forth. So let's take these off the shelf of sure. you know, conceptually and <laughs> let's bring it into an, your real life example of transitioning because that's where people are at. 
they're at, you know, a lot of corporate executives are now leaving and going into the entrepreneurial space and are totally like kind of fish out of water. Um, right. And uh, yeah, so I would love to hear your, your experience with that. Yeah, so I, I think the whole shift principles in the book really came because I was struggling with it as well. It wasn't like I had it figured out and I did it. I jumped out and thought that I, you know, I had success, you know, so it was going to be easy just to continue success and build upon that. And I realized very quickly that that's the skill sets I had, the experiences I had, I had, I had did not understand how to translate those. And so the whole shift principle came because of, of me having that struggle with myself and then me talking with other guys who are sort of my age and who are all feeling sort of and understanding that same kind of struggle. So that's how that all happened. I think the way I apply it in my life is uh, I do have a mastermind group, a group that I'm with, you know, that I rely on, you know, people that I just, you know, in any, in, you know, um, in anything that I'm doing, they are my, they're my go-to guys uh, and women. Um, but they're the ones I lean on. And so I don't move forward with a lot of things in life that are of significance without kind of passing through them and getting some feedback. So, you know, I think that's just true that everybody needs that. And I need that too. So I don't think you'll ever outgrow that. I think you'll always need that. The people in your life, your inner circle may change because you have different needs or different uh, things. And I will say this about inner circles. If you're in an inner circle and they're helping you, you have a responsibility to be their mentor or to be their person for them as well. It's not a one way responsibility where you're taking, 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 you know, you have a responsibility to give back as well to them and their struggles. So that is absolutely uh, critical um, through the process that I went through. I really had to go back. I said earlier that um, looking back at failures was not something that I wanted to do. And I think we all have failures and some of them are just so painful that I just wanted to kind of leave them behind. Some of them were, things that I had done wrong, decisions I had made that I didn't want to own up to. But I think I could not move forward in my life and the things I'm doing. I certainly couldn't coach other people on how to move forward in their life if I hadn't gone back and kind of gotten real with myself and, uh, and, and said, you know, look, you know, John, you left this company because you screwed up, you know, and you got scared and you, you bailed on them. They didn't bail on you. And, you know, kind of having to kind of really look at myself and thinking, Okay, yeah, that's right. I did. And why did I do that? And, and what did I learn from that? And why would I never do that again? You know, so you kind of have to do that self examination of yourself. Investigating options, I think, uh, y you know, we've all tried probably a lot of things in our career, and some worked, some didn't. Um, and the thing that's kept me going and, and, and helping me to be persistent and resilient is that I know where I'm going. And I have a passion about what it, and I can clearly see what it looks like when I'm going to get there. So I've had to learn how to like shift, you know, take these little exit routes and, and try different things in order to kind of help me get to be where I wanted to go ultimately with my life and what's going to give me purpose. So, um, so that's kind of how I apply those. It's not any different the way that I tell other people that they need to apply these to their lives. It's, it's the same process. And, uh, you know, I learn from people because they're ahead of me in some parts of their road and their travels. And, um, and some people kick my butts because they're telling me I'm not doing what I need to be doing, but that's part of the process, right? You've got those people around you and you're doing the things that you've got to do and you want to do in order to get to where you're going. And it's not easy. It's hard work, uh, but it's very worthwhile work. So why coaching? What led you to that specific industry? Yeah. You know, um, I spent my life in a my life before, coaching was in advertising and I built brands for some of the biggest brands in the world that you may or may not have heard of. And I spent time trying to help brands connect with the people that they're trying to, their, their customers. And a lot of doing that is really trying to understand what motivates people uh, to, to purchase. And, you know, there's a saying, and I actually do work a shop on this, you know, uh, belief drives behavior. And so if we want somebody to purchase something, we want somebody to um, come onto our side for anything, we have to understand, you know, we have to get into their psychology and understand what's going to be a driver for them. And so I, the most satisfying part of my job was, was doing that and creating those uh, aha moments for people that then I could connect to the brand. 
And I just realized that the most important, the valuable, the thing that jazzed me up the most was seeing people get an aha moment that was transformative for them. And that just, I mean, that filled my soul. So I, when I made my switch, you know, into consulting, um, I still did some branding stuff, you know, corporate stuff. And I still do actually today. But the thing that really drives my soul is that idea that I can say something or I can give an insight to somebody or I can help them find an insight that is just absolutely going to transform the way they think about themselves or their future or just who they are. It's just, it's an amazing sort of feeling. That's awesome. Well, and, and I think that's, that's what a lot of us, you know, why we, why we get into coaching is because we love that aha and to see people shift and transform. So we definitely are on the same page when it comes to, yeah. to that. And I can see how it lights you up. And, you know, to do workshops and to impact people on that level is, is, and to see how they're later on, how they're living that out is just mm -hmm. really, really cool. One other question is I was, I was listening to you mentioned a little bit of your spirituality background. Um, one of the things that, um, you know, I've, and, and I've, you know, this is not planned. So um, I'm yeah. just kind of springing this on you and love to hear your thoughts. No problem. On it is yeah. that there are some people in the spiritual space it's like christian space but also other spiritual uh, arenas as well where it's like i'm going to get my guidance from you know from source ultimately holy spirit or whatever they want to call it and so where does that fit in and how do you i'm sorry, like not like specifically how do you fit that in with the advice that you get from others, from your own ideas, your own investigation, how do you, how do you incorporate that into this process? Sure. Well, let's get right into it. Um, for I one, <laughs> I, <laughs> so for one, and this is this going to get me jazzed up as well. For one, I think you know I talked about your who for your why. If you are a person of faith, your who better be you know uh, God, Christ, you know whoever that that uh, um, that that entity is that gives you purpose so th that's one and then i um you know i'm a very big believer in um i'm a very big believer in getting inspiration and that things happen sometimes and that if, you're, if you're in tuned with god and you know if you pray and if you're studying you know the bible and if you're kind of in tune with what you know god is about and what how he wants to work in your life then that's a filter that's a great filter for for advice that you're getting from other people and a lot of times i'll get advice and i'll pray about that advice you know and then i'll does it you know then i'll let let god do his part you know let him tell me whether or not that's right or does it feel right or is it right but not yet right or um uh, those kinds of things. So I think you have to, you know, for me and, and maybe for you and many of your listeners, you can stay in tune with, you know, your faith and, and what, you know, that is. And it, you just have to use that as just like your number one filter for everything. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so it's not an either or, I mean, that's the thing. Sometimes I hear it's like, well, I just get my, you know, insight from, or the, the di divine download from there. But people can be a great um, avenue for gaining information. But I love what you said there. I filter it. That's what I do. I just filter everything through. And, yeah. um, and I think that's important. Actually, I have a friend of mine who at some point, it's so funny. Some of my closest friends haven't even yet been on this podcast for whatever reason. <laughs> and uh, she is actually hired by companies to go in and intercede and to pray for direction within their companies and this is actually an area which um which i didn't realize i mean in a sense i didn't realize what i was doing but i was kind of doing that for so as i'm coaching um and it's an area that i'm actually quite interested in is how do we bring that into the into the can you imagine if like people listening out there you know you've got a business you know, wouldn't you want to know if, if you do believe in God, wouldn't you want to know what he had to say about your business? I, I yes. always say to clients, I say, look, God already knows where your clients already are. They just yeah. to ask, right? And, yeah. and, and have him point the, you know, the, you in the right direction. Or as I said, I, to keep this open, not all of my listeners uh, are Christian. Some of them are whatever their background. So maybe it's source, however we want to call that. I'm, I'm not going to get into that, but wherever it's like, just say, Hey, you know what? There's, the answers are there. 
if we can tune into that, right. um, it can actually propel us forward. And, and I think that for many people who are in business, um, it, it's, it's, it's a huge accelerator to be able sure. to have that divine insight uh, into growing their business. So yeah, and I and I think in one sense that the, these shift principles are spiritual principles. Absolutely. Um, so I, you know, I can't separate who I am and and what in the in the shift principles from whom I am because that's who I am. Um, you can apply scriptures to probably all of them, um, but if you're not a spiritual person, they're still useful and you know can give you some guidance there. But I think they're at the bottom line of it is. Um, their spiritual principles. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think we're all spiritual people. So Ultimately, whether we recognize yeah. it or not, we are. Yeah. So. Yeah. Spiritual beings having a human experience. Yeah. Ultimately. So yeah, that was great. I, I just, uh, I was just curious about that. Like, <laughs> I hear it coming out a little bit and I was just curious, but yeah. John, this has been so great. Um, our guests can find a copy of your book. You can just well, I don't have a copy of a physical yeah. copy of your book with you right now. Right there. So that's for those who are listening, moving from where you are to the life you want, shift. You can get that on shiftprinciples.com is the website. And yeah. uh, you can also reach out to John. He does clearly does workshops. He's been on a number of podcasts. Um, some of the guests that, uh, that I've had on my show also are podcast hosts. And I just am so excited to hear uh, some of the intermingling of hosts and guests <laughs> that is happening within the leaders of transformation yeah. community, as well as of course, beyond that. And so you, there's lots of resources to learn more about the shift principles and how you can apply that uh, in your life. And John, I just, uh, I just really appreciate you coming on and sharing a little bit about your passion and also your backstory. And this is something that you have lived, you've gone through it yourself and mm -hmm. now you're walking people through this, uh, journey on you know as well so yeah yes thanks. yeah well you're welcome and i do want to say a couple of things that for your listeners i did create a landing page so if oh awesome if you want to um point them that way it's you, they can go to shiftprinciples.com forward slash lot perfect and what i've given for them um when they hear this and they go to that site is an infographic that has a shift principles on it so they can like, download it if they want to uh second is i'll give you a free copy of the book for if you pay for shipping and handling just so that i can get it in the hands of those and then if anybody's interested in shift principles kind of just wants to figure out their own sort of shift uh i i'll do a three a free 30 minute consult and you can just get on my calendar so Sweet. and that's to your your listeners. Sweet, thank you. And uh, I recognize Tom Schwab's input in that. <laughs> I interviewed him on a podcast from Interview Valet. He is awesome in terms of the way that he supports his clients like you. Yeah. And um, we actually had him on in August, and yes. he talked about that having your having a designated page and how to how to set that up, and you're doing it. And, and that's uh, where I learned it. Tom's a great guy. So appreciate that. That is awesome. Okay. So shiftprinciples.com forward slash L O T for leaders of transformation and all the information there. That's really great. You're giving away the book. Go get a copy of the book. This yes. Get a copy of the book. Yeah. You'll like it. It's an easy read. It's a, it's yeah. a character driven book. So it's not just like principles, but it's a character who's going through everything we just talked about today. Yeah. And nice. he learns these principles through the, his story. So it's, it's kind of a good read. Love it. Love it. John, thank you so very much. I appreciate you. And thank, thank you, you so to much. our listeners or viewers for tuning in. I hope you got some insight and some encouragement that if you were in a, in a, in a season of transition or you just feel like, is this all there is and are wondering what's next? then you know, I, I hope that this has given you some insight into the shift principles that you can use to create the life that you really want. Uh, leaders of tra transformation, take action. So take action on something today. Go to that uh, webpage, download, a cop you know, download the, the infographic, get a copy of John's book, and get started. That's where transformation happens. And it does. It starts at home. We transform ourselves. And then just like John did, we have the opportunity then to help others through that transformation. Uh, transforming the way we see ourselves, the way that we see others, the way that we see the world around us and what we do for a living. So I encourage you to do that. And I look forward to hearing your story. So you can find us on Facebook, Leaders of Transformation. Uh, Twitter is Leaders Podcast. Uh, you can also, of course, and Instagram is Leaders of Transformation. 
or you can also uh, go on leaderstransformation.com and find us there. I'd love to hear your stories, how this has impacted you, and also the stories of how you are impacting others. Uh, if you like this interview, please go to iTunes and leave us a rating and review. Uh, that really does help us get a wider reach. We're in over 100 countries now with listeners, but we want to extend that reach and, and expand the community of Leaders of Transformation. So we appreciate your support in that. So have a great day and we thank you and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Leaders of Transformation real soon.